Second step in managing our patients with tinnitus or our people with tinnitus is assessing the tinnitus and the effect that it may have on our client. We always begin with some form of a tinnitus questionnaire to get information about the otologic or ear or medical history of our client, about their audiologic, what's their hearing like, what's their understanding of speech like. We find out about other factors like their diet, their exercise regimen, does exercise help them or hurt them, um, their emotional pattern, how the tinnitus is affecting them, their sleep pattern, we can't ignore that. If our, if our clients are having difficulty sleeping because of their tinnitus, we have to help them, refer them to the right professional if necessary to get this kind of assistance. And we want to find out about previous treatments. You will be provided by Widex with a sample of a tinnitus questionnaire that you can hand out to your clients. There are certain essential tests that we have to do for our clients. One is we need to know what their hearing loss is like. If we're going to talk to them about hearing aids and the importance of sound stimulation, obviously we need to know about their hearing. So we have to measure an audiogram. We also need some baseline measure of the subjective reaction to tinnitus. So we have to assess how the client determines whether or not their tinnitus is a severe problem for them, a mild problem for them, no problem for them, or something that's completely changing their ability to enjoy life. There's a number of additional diagnostic procedures that some of you may engage in, and you could see some of these on the screen. I would caution you, if you are going to go into some of these more advanced audiologic testing, to be careful about assessing loudness discomfort levels and acoustic reflex decay, because it can, in fact, those loud levels, potentially at least give the perception to the client that their tinnitus has gotten worse and we don't want them to blame us as professionals uh, for making things worse. Very important in this step is to help the client define the tinnitus problem for themselves. One of the most important things we can help our client with is helping them figure out realistically the time frame in which they're bothered by their tinnitus. Many of my patients will come in and I will ask them, tell me about the percentage of, your, of time that you're bothered by your tinnitus, and they'll say, I'm bothered by it 100% of the time. Well, we know realistically that they're not really thinking about their tinnitus 100% of the time. They're not thinking about their tinnitus when their mind is actively engaged in, in some very important matter, for example, or if they're you know, engaged in, in some matter that they're getting great enjoyment out of, watching a, a football game, watching a, a, a TV show that they're laughing about, talking to their children. There are times when a person certainly is not aware of their tinnitus, and it helps if we can help our client understand the time frame in which this is a problem. For many, it's only a problem when they're in very quiet environments. For some, it's only a problem when they're going to sleep. So it helps to define this because our clients don't need to be thinking about this when it's not a problem for them. We also want to know what behaviors are affected. Are, is our client depressed? Are they anxious? If so, we may need to refer them to a professional who can help them with, with medication, for example. We need to know their attitudes and their thoughts, how they feel about the tinnitus. We need to know what affects the tinnitus, certain foods, certain exercise, fatigue, things like that. And we want to know how our client's life would, what their, what their life would be like if they didn't have tinnitus at all. This is something helpful to get them to realistically think about the impact of the tinnitus on their daily lives. We can use a number of subjective assessment inventories or severity scales that the patient or the client fills out, even in your lobby while they're waiting for you, to get a measure of how they interpret their tinnitus. You're seeing on the screen a number of very popular assessment inventories. One of them, for example, is the tinnitus handicap inventory. I'll just show you this one because it's one that is commonly used and is easy to score. And this is a simple 25-item 
survey that takes the client maybe 10 minutes to fill out, and they can do this, and then you can take this score and use it as your baseline measure so that you could assess their progress as your therapeutic intervention proceeds.